It's that time of year again when we're looking at something that we haven't looked at for, well, about a year actually, maybe just over a year. Today, we are going to be looking at a load of fans. So let's try and get these fans out. We have six in total. Hopefully they stand up, no problem. Six fans and a bespoke controller. Now these are not PWM. Well, they are PWM, but not in the normal sense that you can plug them straight into your motherboard. Uh, let's hope that stays there and I don't knock them down. Six fans in total and a controller, which I will get out, which is also controlled by a remote control. Now you can control these via the motherboard and we'll get into the controller in a moment, but first let's take a look at the actual fan. Okay, so before we open the box, let's read the specifications as per what it says on the box. 120 by 120 by 25 mil is the size of the fan. They are addressable RGB. The speed of the fan goes between 600 and 15,000 RPM, give or take about 10% there. So, and we will be testing that, I assure you. We have a new tester and we're gonna be testing to see see what they go up to with regards to airflow. Now moving on to airflow, it says the maximum CFM is 55. And again, as I've just said, we will be testing that. Air pressure is 2.91 mm H2O. That's the maximum that will go to. And apparently the MTTF, the mean time between failure is 160,000 hours. The noise level goes from the lowest speed, which is 600, as I've mentioned, which is eight decibels up to the maximum of 27 decibels at 15,000 RPM, give or take about 10%. So that will probably go up or down depending on the actual speed that it produces. FDB bearing, if anyone knows what that actually means, please do comment down below. I'm not entirely sure what FDB means, but that's what it says it is. Now, this is where you can't use it without the hub. You have to have the hub. It's a six pin PWM connector. It is a PWM. You can connect one of the standard four pin connectors to your motherboard like you would normally that's fine and it will control all the fans but it's all or nothing you can't control individual fans as far as i'm aware and obviously they're 12 volt dc rated as most fans are the good thing though it does have a two-year warranty should you have any problems whatsoever now as you can see there it says this product must be paired with the pirate controller fan hub okay so moving on to the actual controller where you're going to be plugging all these fans into let's have a look inside the box and you will need one of these. Now, I'm not entirely sure if you buy a fan on its own, if it comes with a controller, I suspect that you will probably need to buy this separately. So do bear that in mind if you're going for these fans yourself. So let's open this up and have a look inside. All right, so inside I can see a standard five volt ARGB connector there, which is good to see. And I imagine that will plug straight into the controller. We'll do some close up B-roll shots of these so you can get a good look. There's the controller itself and the little remote controller. Inside is a manual as well. And then we've got some sticky, well, a sticky pad that I'd imagine you can cut if you want to. Although it will probably take up the entirety of the back of the controller itself. So that's good to see. The only trouble with sticky pads is that if you want to take it off, you will have to, well, you'll have to take it off and get another sticky pad. Now, I don't know if this is Velcro. Oh, it's actually Velcro, my mistake. So these are Velcro pads. So actually you just need to find yourself the other side of the Velcro pad and you can stick it anywhere you like. Presuming you can get this off of the place where you're sticking it in your case, you can move it around wherever you like. It's good to see Velcro. I, I quite like Velcro because it gives you that flexibility if you've caught, kind of not put it in the position where it really needs to go in the case. Now the controller itself is SATA, of course. They're all pretty much SATA these days, which is really great to see. Back in the day, they used to still use Molex connector. I'll put that up on the screen now. Molex connector is a much older, larger connector, which was quite a pain to plug in, in some cases. But these are really easy, so that's really, really good to see. But the downside is there's no pass through on this, so you will need a dedicated and a spare SATA connector on your power supply. Now the controller can actually take up to, it looks like 10, we've got 10 numbers on there. So I assume each one of those is one fan. It does look like that indeed. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we've got 10. Five either side, which is good to see. And then we've got 
a reset switch, which I'd imagine you can plug into your case if you've got a redundant reset switch. Most cases still have them, believe it or not. And then you can plug that two pin connector into the reset switch on there. And that will allow you to change the LEDs, the LED function of these fans. Now going to that, it has 55 color settings. So you can cycle through those 55 color settings with your reset button on your case. And of course, we've got a data connection there for the ARGB, for addressable RGB, which you will connect to your motherboard. We'll get into what it supports a little bit later, but that is what you will need to plug in. And that is what this cable here is for. And it also the PWM controllability, the speed of the fans and the sensing of the fans as well. So that is what all that is for there. Now, as I've already said, the fans are single cable fans. So one cable does the fan, the PWM part of it, and also the ARGB connection as well. It's all within one connector. And if you're really unsure, then you can look at this handy dandy guide that tells you exactly what you should plug in and where and what it does. And from looking at this right now, it looks like it's in, it's, it's laid out quite well. It tells you how to stick it on your case. It tells you where to plug the fans in. It all seems in very good English, so you shouldn't have any problems with this whatsoever. And it also tells you what the remote control does and all the buttons, so that's really nice to see. Before we move away from the controller though, let's just show you the buttons on there. We've got LED speed, and we've got a mode button, which I presume changes the 55 color mode settings that we've got on the box of the fans, and the actual fan speed if you have a motherboard at all that doesn't support PWM, you can control the speed on here. But remember that's gonna control all the fans connected to this singular hub. All right, so let's actually see what the fans themselves look like. Now we picked the white fans. So they actually sent those over, which is really nice. Sometimes you can ask for things and you will not get the, the same thing that you asked for. But in this case we did, so that's really good. So uh, we do thank them for that because these are specific in that they're going in a white and rose gold mini ITX tower. So it was quite important that the fans match the build aesthetic. Now, as you can see there, there's, there's no cable attached and you might notice something on the end there. We'll get to that in a minute. Quite common with modern fans these days is that they connect together. Now, obviously it's got RGB and we will be turning the RGB on and I'll show you the entire fan, the six fans, all RGB'd and we'll go through some of the settings as we normally do. But these ones are quite special. It's quite popular on, on most fans, as I've already said. Not all fans, but slightly higher end fans. They're, they're kind of emulating like the Lee and Lee's connectability of the fans where you can join them together. Now to connect these up initially, it needs this little plate here, which will kind of sit over the fan itself. And you slot that in and basically seamlessly connect the power and the RGB from that one connector there, which is, which is good. For cable management reasons, that, that's gonna be quite good. So that's one fan connected there. Now we can go one step further with that and connect another fan. So let's pick out one from that side because I like symmetry. And let's do the same thing again, but not connect that panel. So we've got another fan there, let's move that over. We'll just take the fan out because that's all we need at this moment in time. All the same fans, all the Pirate Eye from Sahara Gaming. Now, these will connect together and you can kind of see these notches here as well on the fan there. And that is where this fan will connect to and you can see the, the raised notches there where that will kind of lock into place. So we're gonna connect that up. It's gonna be a bit difficult to show you this on camera, but I'm sure hopefully you get the, get the idea. And that will lock in like that. We'll just move that over like that. And those are two connected fans. They will perform exactly the same. Well, I'm guessing they will perform exactly the same. And we can test that and see if there's a difference between the more fans you connect, whether the end one is gonna get a weaker uh, power signal, an RGB signal and all that kind of thing. But we can test that because we have a device to test the airflow. So that's two fans but how many can you actually connect together? So moving on, we're gonna connect, we're gonna connect all the fans, let's be honest with you. We wanna connect them all up because one, I wanna see if the first fan in the chain is gonna be a stronger fan than the ones at the end of the chain. 
just a, a thing I'd like to do, these random tests like this. Now, every single fan, just so you know, every single fan comes with this connector that you can slide on. So that, that is also good to see. And there's one thing you're probably wondering is that, say you wanted these three fans, so let's connect this one a minute. You wanted these three on the front of your case for intake, for example, if I can connect it. Okay, so putting the third fan on, I've just noticed that they have to be the correct way around. I was doing it that way around. Obviously, I wasn't paying attention in that the direction of the fans is wrong. So you can't really, I mean, I, I just, I struggled to get that in. And there's a reason why that is, because look at the fans, look at the actual fans. This one's the wrong way around. So they've actually designed it that you can't actually put them in the wrong way around, although they would probably technically work. You have to put it that way around like that to make sure that the airflow is consistent throughout all the stacked fans. So there we have three. So the question that I was alluding to a moment ago is that if this is on the front of your case and you want those as intake, for example, how do you then connect the next ones? So at the front of the case, imagine this at the front of your case and then at the top of your case or on your AIO cooler, you wanna use these fans for that. How do you then connect that to them? Well, you can just use another one of these to start a new chain and then connect these to the controller via that connector. So technically you could have quite a lot of fans connected if you include these as technically one fan because they use one connector. Now you could, if you wanted to connect each individual fan, we have enough and the controller supports up to 10 as we've already shown you, but if you wanted to do multiple chains, if you want even more than six fans than we have here, I guess that is an option, but obviously there's gonna be a limit to the amount of RGB and the power from, from the actual port itself. But it, that would be an interesting test to see how many we could chain together. Anyway, hopefully that made sense. Well, we're gonna continue stacking these fans. So technically it sees it as one fan, not multiple fans, as I just said. So let's just keep stacking these fans. Now you wouldn't, you really wouldn't connect this many fans into one chain. I don't think, I mean, I am because we, we wanna test these things for you so you don't have to do it. And plus science, so we're testing it because why not? So let's connect every single one of these up. Six fans in total, locked in together. Now that, it's a <laughs> that is a humongous chain of fans. Let's see if they power on. Okay, so here we are in our first test. We're gonna be testing to see whether this controller can take six fans from one connection on the controller that comes with it. So we're gonna plug that in. Hopefully you can see this. Plug that into, we'll put it in fan one. And we're gonna plug the controller into a SATA connector, which we have ready over here. And let's see if this works. And there we go, I can see lights on. Oh, oh God, there's a lot of airflow coming through that. I don't know what power setting the fans are on currently. And if there's noise on the, uh, not on the mic, I do apologize. I'm going to turn these round to the other side in a moment. In fact, I'll move them back a bit. Well, angle them down, so I don't want the air blowing on the mic. Now, as we can see there, we've only got three of these six fans spinning in total but RGB is actually continuing up to number five. We've got one, two, three, four, five fans, two only with RGB running. Now I presume we can ch still change the RGB. We'll do that in a second. And there's literally no power there running on that one at all. And there's just not enough power to actually move these fans. Now, I wouldn't suggest sticking your finger in like I've just done on the fans. It's not a good idea, trust me, it hurts. So don't do that. Let's change the RGB mode on this controller here. So let's adjust, let's turn the fan speed down a moment. One thing I do like, I've just noticed on this particular ARGB mode, you've got this blue, this dark blue line. It kind of follows along. Now let's see if I can change the speed on that because it's going a bit quick. Slow it down a little bit. You can see it's timed pretty well, actually. It goes from there and then that one and then that one and then that one. And it just keeps moving along. Obviously not on these so much because it's not completing the ARGB, we seem to have lost some RGB on that one completely. So we've definitely hit our free fan limit. Now, whether if we unplugged a fan on the end that it would make the next one work, I don't know. So maybe there is 
there's definitely a limit, let's, let's put it like that. So let's go through some of the different modes. Maybe that will make it a bit more visible on camera. Now there are 55 different modes that you can go through. I'm sure they're standard static colors there as well. And multiple color options. So if you don't have a motherboard that supports ARGB or you're not using a software like Signal RGB, for example, to control your fans and all your peripherals inside your computer, your AIO coolers and your graphics cards, RGB, then, uh, then you have the option of using the controller. Oh, that's a bit rainbow pukey. It's some really nice, the colors are quite bright actually, and I'm sure they're gonna be brighter on camera. They normally come out brighter on camera than they do in real life. So, uh, but looking at this side itself, yeah, that's nice compared to some I've seen, but I'd say they're just bright enough. Okay, so we're gonna leave it on static. It is fading into different colors, I believe as well. I think it's different colors on the front. No, it's the same color on the front and the back of the fan, just to show you that you've got the same design on the back of the fans as well, and the same colors as it, you can see it fading basically. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna disconnect while it's running. Uh, so I'm gonna to have to light down for this. Disconnect the end fan and just see if that makes any difference to maybe powering up the next fan and just see what the actual limit is. So we've now disconnected and unplugged that fan and we can still see that we've only got three fans working. And the RGB hasn't changed on the end one either, but let's try unplugging the next fan and see if that makes any difference. Because as we know, we, we're definitely getting power to this one. So the extra power that's going to that maybe will hopefully be enough to power the fourth fan in our run. So let's see what happens. Now that one is disconnected. We're going to leave those there. It's still not quite enough to power all of the fans. Although the RGB is fully working on that one, it's just not enough to power all those fans. So we're going to try restarting it. Basically just unplug it, plug it back in again. No, just not enough. So I think that for a single connection on the actual controller itself, you can connect up to three fans from one header if you're joining them together, which actually for most cases, most MIDI tower cases, three is actually the most you can put in most cases at the front of the tower, for example. So having three as the maximum isn't such a bad thing. All right, so with the three plugged in, there we can see they're on maximum speed now. Noise-wise, they're, they're even though it's not in a case, you can definitely hear them. It's very audible. But again, once you've got that plugged into your PWN on your motherboard and you set up that side of it with your fan curves and all that kind of stuff, then you should be able to tweak that a little bit because these will probably be running at their maximum speed. And I'd imagine that the actual controller itself only flicks between the highest speed and the lowest speed because there is quite a big difference and it only seems to be two modes on the controller itself. Okay, so I can't really do a proper scientific noise test, but all I can do is tell you that it's, it's very audible, definitely noticeable on the maximum speed. But one thing that we can do, and that we bought a specific device for, is test the airflow going through the fan. Now we're gonna do one fan at a time. Well, we're just gonna disconnect the two fans and do one fan because they should be, should be fairly similar, but not all fans will be made equal so what we actually have here is a anonymeter, anonometer, <laughs> got there eventually, anonometer, I think that's right. We've got one of these. This is 22 pounds from Amazon. If you want to pick one up yourself, if you're doing a lot of fan testing, then I'll put a link in the video description down below, as well as the fans for these, the, the links for these fans as well. And this will be the first time I've used this. So hopefully this goes to plan. Our fan videos tend to do fairly well. Uh, impressively out of all the other videos that we do the fan ones are normally quite popular and I'm sure you'll agree that we're giving you a lot of information here about these fans but one thing we've never really been able to do properly is actually measure the airflow in a in a visible way that I can show you on the screen so that changes with this video so what we are going to do is we are going to just for this test at least, try and put it about five to 10 centimeters away from the actual fan itself. And we're gonna only use one fan, so we'll disconnect that in a minute. Now we can measure the airflow, the velocity of the air in miles per hour, feet per minute, feet per second, knots, 
miles per second, m, m slash s, I'm not entirely sure what that one, is, that one is, kilometers per hour, and then back to miles per hour. But the one we're really interested in is the CFM flow, the airflow, the actual airflow of the fan. That is what we're gonna be checking. Now on the box it says 55, providing this is accurate, and I don't know how accurate these are, but it's gotta be better than holding a bit of paper up against the fan, hasn't it? So we've kind of leveled up on that. So let's disconnect the fans, unplug the other two, and well, let's just test one fan, shall we? Okay, so we're gonna lie the fan down that way. Let's just double check the airflow direction. Normally these things have an arrow on them. Uh, there it is on the back side, so that's good to see. There's an arrow on the bottom which shows you the direction of the airflow, so we will need to know that. So I'm gonna lie that down that way. And we'll try and do this so that you can see it in real time. This might be a bit tricky. It's definitely on the higher setting. Interestingly, I can feel more air blowing out the opposite direction of the fan, of the arrow, than I can on this side. So I don't know whether they've got the arrow the wrong way around, but the arrow is pointing in that direction. And hopefully you can see that on the camera. If not, I'll try and hold it still so you can zoom in. But the, I can feel the air on this side and not on this side. So that suggests to me that it's going that direction, not, not that direction as denoted by the arrow on the actual fan itself. So, I mean, that's interesting. Am I reading that wrong or something? Anyway, we'll do it in the direction that I can feel the airflow. So, let's do, ow, let's do it that way around. And let's try and, oh, it's already moving. Now, I, it will store the setting, so I will do this and try and show you. I'll try and hold it up and show you as well. Let's just see if we can do this. So uh, direction of the airflow needs to be that way. So we're gonna hold it about 10 to five centimeters away. Now, I can't actually see what it says on the screen there. I'm hoping you guys can. So what is it actually showing? That should be long enough for it to show a consistent number now. So I'm just gonna flick that around quickly. So it's actually showing 59 there. Now, what I'm going to do is push the hold button. I'm going to hold that there, right? Same distance. And then I'm going to push the hold button and hopefully that holds it at the maximum. And then I can actually see what it says. So that's 56.76 CFM. As you can see on the screen there, hopefully that's focusing on that okay. So it's not far off that 55 actually, and actually more than it said, but don't forget it did state on there that it was plus or minus 10%. So that is within the variant of the 10%. Okay, so let's try another fan just to see if they're all the same or fairly close. Now that there's bound to be some variance in the fan themselves because that's just the way things are made. There's not, not everything is equal. So we're gonna plug that straight on to that. We're gonna do the same thing again and we're gonna hold it up again, hold it the correct way around this time. And it's on CFM flow, so that's what we want. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. About the same distance now. In an ideal world, we would actually have this mounted and then have this ananometer mounted correctly at the same distance for every single fan. But as this is our first test, we will figure out about doing that in future videos for proper fan testing. So I think that's been long enough. So I'm gonna hold that now. Now you can already see the number. 64 on that one, so that one's even higher than the other one. Interesting, isn't it? That the differences between the individual fans. So we're gonna do that one more time. Let that go to zero in a moment, just so you can see it going to zero. There's no movement in the fan there whatsoever, apart from it slowing down. Okay, so let's do it one more time. I'd imagine that should be at its maximum by now, so let's Hopefully that's the hold button. And that one again is 57. So as you can see there, 57, as you already saw that, that's a, that's a quite a big difference, isn't it? From what it was a moment ago. And that could just be that the distance I was holding it at. Uh, so we're gonna try and do that a bit closer. See if that makes any difference whatsoever. That's probably about 10 centimeters where I am now. 
I think that's been long enough. We're going to hold that. And that was actually showing 79. So obviously, the closer you are to the fan, the more air is going to show on the anonymeter. So that's one thing that we need to be aware of is consistency in the testing. And that's something that we're going to look at doing in future videos. We're going to probably keep that about 10 centimeters. I think that's the recommended distance between five and 10. So we're going to do 10 on that. But as you can see there, 79.71 at roughly about 10 centimeters distance from that fan. And I'm sure if we did the same thing with the other fan, it would be the same as well. So we're going to test one more fan just to see what the variances are. Okay, so this is the third fan that was in the chain. We're going to reset that unit there. Let's uh, get rid of, let's unhold that, make it go to zero. We can just hold the fan blades there. Let that just stop a moment. So that should be pretty much zero now. Yeah, zeroed out, just so you can see there. So we're gonna hold that around the right way and uh, get my finger on the hold button, just so we can see that. Maybe about 10 centimeters roughly again. As, as I said, we'll do that more accurately in future, but for this video, we're just gonna hold it here. Should give a average reading. As long as we're basically doing all the fans in the same way, shouldn't really be any variances too much in our testing. I think. That should be long enough for it to get to its maximum there. So we're going to freeze that. Now, you've already seen it. 77.69, so actually not far off the other fan that we just tested. So yeah, I'd say they're all pretty close together. Now, one thing I do want to test is the very end fan that we had connected. So I'd, just to make sure that it wasn't faulty and the fan is actually working, we're going to plug it directly in and just to verify that the reason it wasn't spinning is not because there was too many fans connected, but uh, not because it was, you know, faulty. I don't think this one's working. Oh, here we go. I had it run the wrong way. So if you plug this bit here in the wrong way, the fan will not work, obviously, because the pinouts will be incorrect for, you know, making the fan actually do its thing. So again, we're going to do this. So that we verified that this end fan that we had on the very end, the one that wasn't spinning earlier, is actually working. So that's fine. We're going to make that go to zero again, which it should now be. Zero, 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 and hold it around that way. Get my finger on the thingy, on the button. Hold it about 10 centimeters away again, and give it about five seconds or so this time. I think that should be long enough. Let's hold that. And 73.67 on that particular fan. So within margin of error, don't forget, it said the maximum airflow, the CFM airflow was 55. So actually these are even higher than it said, give or take about 10%, obviously. So 73 on pretty much all of the fans that we've tested so far, uh, five, uh, four out of the six fans that we've tested. That's really good. Now this thing does have a party trick. It does allow us to connect it to a computer to do. And again, we'll, once we've figured out how this thing works properly by plugging it into the computer. It has a bit of software that we can log down every single bit of information about a fan. And then we can put that data into charts to show you guys actual uh, live readings, or maybe not live readings, but charted readings on in a, in a way that's easy for you to understand. It's not easy to say, but it, it, hopefully it makes it easy for you guys to understand when we do fan testing videos and stuff that uh, this will give you some benefit in showing you that what these fans are actually like and if what they're telling you is correct and all those kind of things. So it's a really good thing to have and it's something that we will be using a lot in the future. Okay, so there is the other three fans. Now, one thing to bear in mind that I've put in these fans together, I've already broken two of the, two of the tiny little plastic bits off the end here. In fact, one I think was already broken. You can see there, there's one on that side, but not on that side, that's already broken. So they're not amazingly strong. So that's something you want to bear in mind when you're connecting them together. Make sure you get them the right way around because they're really not that strong. And that's something you need to be aware of because otherwise you're gonna have a bad time using these fans. As you can see there, holding that up very carefully not to get them in the fan, plugged in all together and all fans are now working as they should. On the RGB is working as well, which is great to see. So there we go. That is the Sahara Pirate Eye fans. Pretty good. Connectability is pretty good, although do watch out for those little clips that connect the fans together because they're not that strong. And 
it can definitely take all six fans on a single controller, just not six all together. Before you go, if you want to see these fans in an actual build, stay tuned, get subscribed, like this video and click the notification bell because the next video coming after this one is us using these fans in an actual white and rose gold build.